And welcome back. Well, today we continue our regular series, Mental Health Moments with Rogers Memorial Hospital. Well, most of us know about talk therapy. It can help us talk about our problems, but sometimes it's a challenge to find words to talk about those painful feelings, and that's where another type of therapy can be very powerful. It's called experiential therapy, and it can include things like yoga, music, art, and even horticulture. Sue McKenzie is the program director of Rogers In Health, and Mike Holzer is a registered art therapist at Rogers Memorial Hospital. Welcome to both of Good you. Good to see Thank you both. Great you. to see you. So many of us are familiar with talk therapy, mm -hmm or psychotherapy we know that it's an important tool for people to if they're ha if they have a mental illness or things that are difficult or painful to talk about it can help to get those things out yeah. this though is is kind of um, something in addition to that that, that people are really having success in healing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all the experiential therapies there's a variety of experiential approaches that we can offer people at Rogers Memorial Hospital there's art therapy there is music therapy you talked about yoga and horticulture therapy. We also do um, adventure therapy. We do ropes and challenge groups on certain campuses. Um, so the experiential therapy is an umbrella term for a variety of approaches. Um, all of the experiential therapies engage groups in a hands-on experience that can help deepen the understanding of what their treatment process is about. Um, whether that's the feelings awareness that they need to express or develop coping skills or learn new leisure skills. Um, as an art therapist, I've seen so many people come into our program and express <coughs> feelings that they may never have expressed yeah. or learn new skills that they didn't think they were able to accomplish or, or do new things, develop new relationships, trust people mm -hmm. um, in the group setting and take healthy risks. It's, it's quite an incredible way to to work with people in a treatment setting it sounds too fun to be a sort mm -hmm. of therapy uh, or an intervention <laughs> you know to paint to do an adventure mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. things like that it sounds like you're helping people develop more of themselves through a hobby how how does the therapy part work well the therapy part it, it is a lot of fun i feel mm -hmm. very privileged that yeah. I, I i we see ourselves as, as people see ourselves as fun people um, but, but there is a lot of work going on in the therapeutic process. When, when people start having fun in treatment, the defenses go down yes. and their feelings start to become more readily expressed. And that's really an important thing. So while the groups appear fun, it's important to know that there is a lot of really difficult things that might come up with that experiential activity, depending, you know, no matter what the discipline is. Um, so that's always an important part for an experiential therapist to be aware of is that it, it is fun, but there's a lot of treatment work that's going on. Well, you, so you almost think about it when kids are learning in, in school and there's mm -hmm. playtime. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. learning a lot while they're mm -hmm. playing and having fun. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of examples um, yeah. of art, different images that mm -hmm. kind of demonstrate how people are working through something mm -hmm. with um, art therapy. What can you share with us about the, the images that we're seeing here? Well, this first uh, example is, is it's excellent because it shows a person that's coming in uh, with a bipolar disorder and their world was so confusing and chaotic and you really see this road map going every which way all these arrows pointing in different directions but through the the uh, art therapy process through the creative process we were able to pinpoint exactly what the current stressor was for this person that brought them back into treatment and talk about those skills. The second one too is somebody who felt like they were very alone. Yes, so down in the bottom left hand corner you see the person, that this was done by an adolescent who thought they were all alone in their mood disorder and then coming into treatment they found that there were other fish in the sea and they, they weren't so alone in their mood disorder. There were other people that struggle with mm -hmm. mood disorders. So telling, what about this one? This was done by a, a man that received addiction recovery services, and those are the demons on the left-hand side. Those are the demons of his addiction, trying to crawl into his head at any time possible throughout his you know, taste triggers, sight triggers, smell triggers, trying to crawl into his in head. And on the left, or on the other side, we see the, uh, the tools that he learned throughout the recovery process, how to develop support systems, mm -hmm. how to express his feelings getting involved in 12-step programming, making those things a part of his life so that he can fight the demons of his addiction. <clears throat> how, how does this look outside the programs at, Ro at Rogers, Sue? So obviously the expertise of the, of the experiential therapist mm -hmm. is critical in people who have these deep needs for treatment. At Rogers In Health, we focus on 
what I call the frontline folks in our world, the parents, the teachers, the nurses mm -hmm. that are interacting with all of us all the time. And just like you said in the beginning, sometimes saying, how you doing today? What are you feeling? Doesn't really work. Yeah. And so we're um, working more and more with the frontline folks to understand how critical it is that we're aware and we listen during these times of movement and art with our children, with our friends. I mean, we see it as adults, right? There's lots yeah. of activities now that we can share in art. And yeah. It's a, new, it's a new opportunity for us to have a different level of conversation. I love the work that you do, Sue, especially as it relates to stigma, reducing the mm -hmm. stigma of mental illness. And I know that you've had an opportunity to film the stories mm -hmm. of people who've even gone through this experiential therapy um, and how pivotal it is in Absolutely. their recovery. I mean, you've seen it, you've heard mm -hmm. it, right? Absolutely. I think of one woman who, you know, it sounds like fun, but she said the first time they put a pencil in her hand, she wanted to tell their therapist where to put the pencil. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah, because yeah. you're defensive. And she, through, through this very patient work that she did with the art therapist, changed her life. And story after story after story of that on the website. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. It's really mm -hmm. incredible. And I know you've shared these stories, and we want to share them with you, yeah. too, because I think p for people to have hope and to see examples, specific real people having healing is so important. And you can see more stories of recovery by going to this website. It's rogersinhealth.org. That's a website. And to reach the people at Rogers Memorial Hospital and the great work that they're doing in experiential therapy and other forms of therapy as well. You can go to rogershospital.org. Always great to see you soon. Yeah, Thank you so you. much, Thanks, Mike, Mike, for your time. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it.